Close your eyes and imagine. Imagine in the middle of the ocean, floating. There's something pulling you down. A weight attached to your ankle. You're trying your best, exhausting every resource, every bit of your energy. No matter how much you try, no matter how hard you try, you go down. And then to a point where your mouth is at the surface of the ocean. You grasp for one last breath, subconsciously hoping for a miracle to happen. And you drown. You see the light fading away. Your life flash by. This was my reality sometime back in August. I felt like I had led a great life. I had my fair share of memories, happy moments, achievements, but I did not see anything out of life anymore. I felt like it was only downhill and I was too proud to let that happen. To say I was going through a hard time would be an understatement. Right, I was about to make a life-altering decision with my mind going 120 miles in a 20-mile lane. A choice to call my friend in the split second was like swerving at the last second and saving yourself from an accident. He talked me out of making a decision, a life-altering, one I could not take back. A coin has two sides. The obverse, the heads that the world sees, and the reverse. This is what you don't show to the world, the tales. I talked to you about the reverse, what the world did not saw, see, what only I knew. Now I'm going to show you the obverse, what the world saw. I'll flip the story for you. To everyone, I was a teenager with a perfectly amazing lifestyle. I made it to national headlines when I was 10. I had an extremely loving family. They supported me in any way and every way they could. I had amazing friends, cool ones. They planned surprise parties through my birthdays. Um, I had a perfect 4.0 GPA through my middle school, high school. I had, I got into my dream college, Carnegie Mellon on a full scholarship. I basically had everything um, for my, I was looked up by my siblings, my cousins. And talking about everything, I basically had everything, or so it seemed. While my life looked good from the outside, on the inside I was miserable. I was incapable of feeling anything, happiness, nothing. For, in, for in, instance, how much I achieved, I could not feel when I got into CMU. My parents, they burst into tears of joy. All my life's work, sacrifices, late nights and early mornings paying up. And I sat there like this. And my dad asked me, are you not happy? I told him, no, no, I'm happy. And then he goes, Hamza, you show no expression, what's wrong? Do you not want to go to school? I'm like, no, I want to go to school, it's an amazing college. And he's like, what's wrong? And internally I'm thinking, I can't fake it anymore. I just can't take it. For me, like many, the issues were deep rooted. As a child, I was bullied. I was harassed. I was picked on. I was excluded from groups. Every time I came home after I was called the whiz kid, a nerd. My sense of achievement became a curse for me. Every time I came home, after being in a class where they pretended like I was not present there, then planning things without me, I would put up a brave face for two reasons. One, I did not make, want my parents to feel sad or bad. Secondly, I was taught by the society to show myself as strong, as emotionless, and that's what, exactly what I did. How was the day? They'd ask me and I'd tell them, great. I did a very human thing when I was pushed down. I chose to avoid the hurt. I started building barriers every time I was pushed around, every time I was called slurs, nerd, everything. I chose not to trust people. 
lost faith. I, every time I, I, I brought, made up these harmful coping mechanisms and I put them up as walls in my mind. This is, I'm not going to do this and this is not going to happen. And before I knew it, those walls that I built to save myself from the bullies and the cruelty of the world, that became my mental labyrinth. I was stuck in it. You know the feeling of playing, so playing soccer and in the last five minutes you have to score but you see, but you get a panic attack, the world's slowing down, chaos, they used to happen to me all the time. It happened as the maze, my mental labyrinth got colder, darker with my mood. I did not want to believe it or, or put a label to it, but I was depressed. Speaking of depression, WHO states that about 264 million people in the world are depressed. And just in Qatar alone, 13.5% of the population accounts for depressed. About 1.4% of the people every year die from suicide. Or perhaps, and the reason, or perhaps one of the reasons, mental health stigma, judgmental society, mis misinterpreted lifestyle. For myself, it took me four years to accept, and even several fainting sessions to accept that I had mental health issues. It was acceptance that got me out. When I finally made up my mind to go see a doctor, his first question was, what took you so long? It was acceptance that was the firefly that led me out of the dark, my mental labyrinth. Without acceptance and coming face to face with my issues, I would have never recovered. The road to success requires taking the first step and the first step in any issue is acceptance. Once you have come out of the denial and accepted your reality, your situation, you embrace your true self. You start to understand yourself. Many of us face setbacks, but remember, comeback is always stronger. In our culture, a man is shown as an iron statue, emotionless, cold, strong, and this is really detrimental to one's psychological state. Accepting a flaw does not mean you're weak, it does not mean you're inferior, it means you're strong. It means you understand yourself. For me, getting in touch with my emotions became liberating. As J.K. Rowling once said, the famous author, we all know her, Harry Potter, understanding is the first step to acceptance, and with that only acceptance can there be recovery. In that moment of chaos back in August, realizing myself were through the words of another, he reminded me of a mental health campaign I had once led and then abandoned. Because of how much his words mattered to me, helped me, I decided I wanted to do the same for others. I wanted to make it official. I wanted to make a difference. Two nights after that, I did not sleep, in all honesty. I was working, I used every resource, everything I could. I called my friends, I called professionals, I got advice, I contacted psychiatrists, doctors, entrepreneurs that talked to them about my idea and slowly slowly it all started coming together the organization my organization my brainchild firefly i wondered who will help those who couldn't get the last beacon of hope that i got and basically all what all of this had brought me was more time but the fight was far from over My mental health journey inspired me to found Pakistan's first organization, 
Mental Health Organization for Students, Firefly. Being able to use my experience to help others gets me going, it keeps me motivated. It gives me a sense of purpose. All of this happened with a small step of acceptance, which became the firefly to lead me out of my mental labyrinth. Ask yourself what is going to be your firefly? Who are you leading out of the dark? Whose life are you going to be the firefly in? Thank you, Ted.